Hi everybody, it's Janet and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to do a follow-up video about the Works, which is an all-in-one tool from We Are Memory Keepers. I did the initial reviews on this board way back. It feels like 150 years ago. It was October 2019. And at that time I'd just gotten it and I was talking about all the different features. And then I did a few videos after showing some of the 10 things that the board was reported able to do. Well, it's been a long time and I have continued to use this board. And in fact, I'm here to tell you that I use this as my first trimmer and scoreboard. And I use it for a few other things as well, of course, because things are built in on here. You have up to 10 things you can do. I don't do them all. Um, I don't do some of them at all. But it's just because of the way I work. It doesn't mean that it's a bad board. But what I wanted to focus on today was why I like it so much. And I also wanted to show you how to change the blade in the cutter. Because at the time that I did the review, I didn't know if I'd be able to even find blades for it. And I worried about it kind of going to waste. Because once the blade didn't work, that sort of made everything less valuable, right? Well, I did find out pretty early on that there are blades to replace it. I'm going to show you what those blades are. Now, I apologize because I opened this package and then I realized I had another blade available. So what I'm going to be doing is showing you how to replace the old blade right here with a new blade. And actually, I have a third little package here. This is just like this package, except that I cut it in half. I'd used the other one some time ago, and again, forgot I had this one. Open this package. You know how it goes, ladies and gents. Uh, sometimes you just screw it up, so here you go. But I did want to show you what the pack looks like. It always comes in a two-pack. I don't think it comes in a four-pack or anything, or even a single pack. I get mine at the local Joann's. I don't find this reliably either in Hobby Lobby or Michael's in my community. That doesn't mean that you won't find it and you could probably get maybe, well I won't say that, but maybe you can get both of them online through their websites. I'm really not sure because I'm fortunate enough here that I have all three stores and I can go to either one of them for whatever it is that I'm looking for. And I just know that some places, some things I need to go to Hobby Lobby, some things I need to go to Michael's, and some things I need to go to Joann's. When it comes to We Are Memory Keepers things, at least in my local community, the Joann's has the best selection. So they're easy to get. They were a little hard for a while during the pandemic, but they've come back now. Every time I've been to the store, they have some ready for purchase there. So. Let me show you how easy it is to change the blade. Let's go down here and look at it. So this is on a track, right? It goes up and down. And it stops here. You can't just easily push it off. And down here is the same. So initially you may be wondering, how in the world do I take this blade off? Because there's no instructions. There's nothing on the package. Uh, I don't think, nope, I know for a fact there wasn't any instructions either in the literature that came with the board. So I just had to kind of play around with it and sort of figure it out. So here's what you do. At first I thought, oh, you just push it off. And honestly, if you push it hard enough, you might get it to come off. But the real trick is, is to hold it back here toward the back of it and lift it a bit and push at the same time. And it'll come right off for you. Simple as pie. Now you can't do that down here, but it will come off up here. So to put it back on, Let's put in a new blade. I'm going to take this out. Whoops, went flying. You're going to put it on in a very similar way. But before I do that, I would like to talk a little bit about this blade. So, this is kind of a triangle or a tooth shaped blade. You see there? So, it's shaped like this, like a V, right? Each side is sharp and the point itself is sharp. And then it's housed at the top here in the actual mechanism that you slide up and down. So that means both sides of this blade is very, very sharp. You want to be careful because you can easily cut yourself with this. The other thing I want to talk about when we're looking at this blade is the realization that it's sharp on both sides, not just one. So let's put it on and I'll talk about that a little more. So to, to do that, it just 
find where the groove is and push it on. Now do be careful, don't put your finger right here and then go and cut yourself. It could be very easy to do that, so I'm just uh, letting you know to watch for that. Now let's talk about the blade a little bit more. With this two-sided blade, one has to remember that you can get more use out of it if you're equally using both sides of the blade. If you're only using one all the time, you're going to wear it out a lot faster and you can't flip the blade around and start using that, that other side the same way that you did the way that it sits here. So let's show you what I mean. I have this little piece of cardstock here. And it's instinctual, really, for people to start at the top and cut down. That's a normal, natural thing to do. I imagine that some people tend to want to start at the bottom and head up. Also, very natural thing to do. But I would suggest, and I have gotten used to this, is that you bring your cutter blade about in the middle of whatever it is that you're cutting first. Then press it down. It'll puncture the paper and then either push it up or down first. In my case, I tend to push it down first. Then I come back and push it all the way up. Now what does that do? It is equally using each side of your blade. And that way it's getting dull on both sides about the same pace. So you're not ending up with one side really sharp and the other side really dull. And by doing this, you just extend the life of the blade. So that's a a good tip that I can give you that I've learned for myself. <clears throat> the other thing that helps keep these blades sharp is that it's traveling in this channel. See this gap here? It's wide enough for the tip of the blade to fit and so when you're cutting that blade tip is not rubbing against anything. It's just cutting the paper on the edges of your blade. And that's very different from a lot of cutters. Here's one this is a Creative Memories cutter, a very good cutter. I used it before I got the works tool. But there's a couple disadvantages here. One is, now this is rotary. So rotaries are very good as far as being able to cut a great straight line. And this does cut a great straight line. But the problem with it is, is it has this kind of mini cutting mat here, which the blade runs up and down on when you're cutting. And over time, you get these pressure cut marks. So you can keep rotating it. You get, get that twice here and twice on the other side. But eventually, you have to replace this because as that indentation becomes deeper, you get a more ragged cut. So you have to do that in order to maintain this cutter. You don't have that issue with this cutter because there is no mini mat strip to put in and use. Also, this blade isn't running on that and dulling it. As I'm certain it must dull any kind of blade that's running over anything over and over again. So the only thing that's dulling this blade is going to be your actual paper. And that's a big disadvantage or big advantage, I think. Again, this is just my opinion, but I I got to think that this helps extend the life of the blade itself. The now let's talk about why I really love this beyond the fact that the blades are really long lasting and easy to get. The other reason that I really like this is because of this track system and the fact that there are measurements along here. And I'm going to take this off to show you another thing. So on this carriage you can see there's a line right here which is sitting like this when you're cutting. Then on this side, there's another line. This indicates where the blade is. And on this side, there's another line too. So on all three angles, plus this side, which is facing your ruler here, you've got a way to see where your blade's going. So from all angles, you are set in understanding where you're going to make your cut. So if you're going to make a detailed cut in a large piece of paper, and I only have just a little one here, but let's say I wanted to make a one by one cut. Pretty simple. The thing that I like about this cutter is I can move this, I can look at that line on the edge there and match that line up to the one inch mark. Then I can put the paper in at one inch, press this down and go up in this case. Now that would be the one time I wouldn't um, be starting in the middle probably. 
go to the one inch mark now and I always kind of lift it up a little bit and slowly come up to the line and it's going to release and that way you can get an almost perfect cut here without wasting all this other paper it's hard to do that with a rotary because you can't see exactly where that blade is going in it's round so it doesn't have a nice sharp point the way a blade like this does so it's just very convenient if you're trying to do some precision cuts or you don't want to waste a bunch of paper because to make that one by one cut you had to go all the way across and you only needed this little piece and you wasted it again when you're talking about such little pieces of paper it's not a big deal but if we're talking about an eight and a half by 11 or 12 by 12 and you're just taking a small chunk out of it you don't really want to waste uh, all that paper in a cut that you're going to end up you know just having leftover paper with nothing to do with it so anyway that's another thing that i can share with you that i really like also with this track it's very heavy duty so with some of the track style cutters I've had in the past this hasn't been very heavy duty it's been actually quite flimsy so when you moved the cutter mechanism across it would move around and therefore your cut would not be straight it would be more wavy and that drove me nuts I hated that part about the style of cutter that uh, is in a track like this but I do not have this problem um, with the we are memory keepers uh, works tool doesn't do that it stays in place and it stays straight so I get great cuts out of it the other thing about it is when you put down your you know your track it locks down so it doesn't secure this completely but it really does put some pressure down on it certainly is a lot better than this right it's a little harder to to move around so it helps stay it in place and my memory is a little hazy on this but I don't think that the other track styles that I had in the past had that kind of catch mechanism in it and so that really makes this one a better unit as well because of that all right so a couple other things that I really like about this tool is the bow maker down here. Now when I initially reviewed this I worried that these posts would fall apart, that they'd crack and break and wouldn't hold up. But I've not had that problem at all and I do use these semi-regularly. I mean every time I make a bow I'm using this tool and it's very simple to do. I'm not going to get into how to make it because I did a video about that before but it uh, has held up really nicely no cracks no breaks and there's actually two sets of them so if you did lose one you still are good to go for that now what I don't use is the pom-pom maker and the tassel maker I'm just not gonna use those for anything but I think if you were making planners and mini albums and things like that you probably would want to have some pom-poms or tassels to hang off of your pages or to act as like a, a bookmark or something like that so although it's not for me it may be for you so just keep that in mind and then I also do use the envelope maker now the envelope maker slips in here like that and what I like about this is you can see where the arrow is for the envelope and it matches up to the arrow that says envelope here that's where you know it should go and then you make sure that it's solid there and then you can cut your paper according to the scale which is handily right here and then you can even follow the directions if you've forgotten it's on the back of the guide so you don't need to dig out your literature and that's really a nice feature similarly for banners tags and tabs that is also there too as far as how to use it so it's very handy that way the weird thing is is it goes what i in as i would consider backwards you'd think that it would go in this way because that's how you see it when you pull it out but it actually goes in this way and it fits nicely back there the thing that I don't use at all is the stamp press, or very rarely, because I use my Misty, and I'm a very active stamper. I stamp a lot, 
And if you're going to be stamping often, you probably want a true and real stamp press of some sort. However, this would be great for just little stamp jobs. If you're just stamping a sentiment or two once in a while, you're not really doing a lot of heavy duty stamping, this tool may be perfect for you. There is a little acrylic rectangle thing that sits on here. It's got magnets and that's how it stays in place. Honestly, I don't even know where that is right now because I just don't use it. So I put it away and it's gone. It's here somewhere, <laughs> but I don't use it and I don't miss it. So it's kind of a pain to keep with it because it wants to fall off all the time. That's what I found. And so in the end, I just took it off and put it somewhere else. Again, though, if I were just a casual stamper or maybe a scrapbooker who just likes to do a few small things, that would work pretty well. Let's see. Oh, I did want to mention when it comes to the envelope maker, it is a little slower than using the punch board. I have to be honest about that because let's put, in, put this back for a second. I'll show you what I mean a little bit is to make your envelope after you have your piece of paper, you line it up here and you score it right and then you turn it clockwise clockwise and you score it again and you get all four corners scored then you have to take the piece bring it over here to the punch and slip it in there and punch now then you do that around all four sides well with a punch board you punch and then you score then you turn you punch then you score then you turn and so on so in about the same time that you would score your four sides here, you'd be done making your envelope, at least the form of it, before you fold it on the punch board. But if you don't want to dig it out, you don't want to store it, you don't want to deal with it, this is the way to go because it's right there and it's handy and easy. And it's also very nice, of course, that we have the notch punch and then we've got the, the rounder punch too. Yep, I didn't push it in far enough. There we go, it's a little better. It is a very narrow uh, curve, be aware of that. If you don't like that, you may wanna use your own corner rounder if you want a deeper. This is probably a quarter inch and often you'll see half inch curves. So just depends on what you like, but this one makes a nice little smooth corner here that is uh, rounded. All right. The other thing that I do use fairly regularly is the tab function. I wanted to show you one. This is a tab I made for my stamp drawer and behind that would be my get well stamps. So this is really easy to make using the punch board. <clears throat> you use this side to make it. Actually you bring this out and set it like so. And this allows you to make your punches for the various tabs, right? And then after you make the cut, then you take your cutter and you cut it across here and it will release this section, leaving your tab. So again, I've done a video on how to do that, but I find these to be very handy. I put them in my stamp drawers, I put them in my finished cards to separate the different kinds of themes. Anytime that I need a divider, instead of buying something, I will make one like this. It's quick and effective. And you can make them in all different sizes. So this is a pretty big one, but you can also make them, you know, much smaller, you know, like that size. So it just depends on what your need is, which I really find useful because then I don't have to rely on someone else's product and have to use whatever side that, size that they're providing. Anytime you can do something custom to meet your needs, that's always a good thing in my book. All right, I guess that will finish it up for me today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you didn't mind the switch from facing me to down at my table. I'm just trying a way to have more of a conversation with my viewers instead of just seeing my hands and hearing my voice. I would like to try to connect better with you all. So if you didn't like it, I apologize. I don't know if I'll keep doing this. I'm gonna keep trying and see if I can get better at it. The other thing is, I probably should apologize for my inky and stained hands. I just done some alcohol ink work 
cleaning out my Copics, cleaning caps and things, and it just stained my fingers. And so when I came to make this video, I was trying to wash it, try, trying to wash my hands off, but it was only semi-successful. Hopefully you know what that's like and can uh, sympathize with me a little bit, and I hope it didn't bother you overly much. Well, that's it for me today. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. I will be back soon with another video, but until then, please subscribe if you haven't already, and check your subscribe bell. That's the bell that's next to the word subscribe. If that isn't black in color, a solid black color, then you haven't clicked it to get notices from me when I post a new video. So just check that out. Make sure it's clicked so that you do get a notice and you can come and visit with me again. Thank you. Have a great day. See you later. Bye.